Hello guys and welcome back to the channel once again and also welcome to this nice and beautiful after sunset scenery here. I'm at the spot that I was last on my recent vlog where the Aurora show happened in that particular night. Um, I won't be at the exact spot, that, like it's the same area, but I will go further up the mountain to capture the uh, currently visible comet 13P Pons. No, I keep forgetting the name, it's so, so stupid. Um, 13P Olbers, it's the name. We are trying to photograph that with a telephoto lens. I have with me my 70-200 Tamron lens. And yeah, we were trying to get a really clean shot with the comet. So it's sort of like deep sky-ish and then also in, yeah, in combination with a nice foreground. And I have a really cool foreground in mind, uh, which I will show you later. It's a, it's a weather station uh, tower or house, which looks really cool. At least from here, I can see it. You can't see it, but I can see it. And then after that is the finished, um, I think I will just capture some nice Milky Way action uh, because yeah, it's the end of July. It's right in the peak of Milky Way core season and I will get the most out of that um, while we are here. And yeah, maybe you can hear it or you can see it in the back here. We have lots of cows here, so I'm not alone, which is always a good sign. And yeah. Just keeps the nerves down when you when you hear some creepy noises in the in the forest. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, I have to yeah walk up quite a bit more, so I won't uh, yeah stand here longer and just go. <laughs> so we are almost there. Behind me, you can see both the radio tower and here on your left the weather station tower and i think the weather station will make a really cool foreground it looks really cool from here um, one challenge i think will be to find the perfect alignment point because i want to make yeah the alignment as close as possible of course i will not shoot the um, comet with the tower like in the frame i will take them separately but i want to be as close to be perfect with the alignment as possible and yeah i think i should yeah just start moving because it's getting dark really quick, quickly now and yeah i have to find some compositions for the milky way So I'm just checking for the alignment point and honestly I think this position here is almost perfect because when I look up the sky now I can start to see the first stars, I can see Vega, I can see Deneb, so the Cygnus region is here, so Polaris, if I, ah, I can see Polaris here, I think this is Polaris, so, oh no, I think that's not Polaris, or is it? Maybe this is Polaris and the comet is just below the Big Dipper, more or less. And the Big Dipper should be right around here, above the weather station. I think I start to see the first stars of the Big Dipper. So yeah, yeah, ah, it lines up almost perfectly. That's good. Um, yeah, that's nice. What I'm going to do now is to check with the zoom lens attached how far I have to be away in order to get the entire um, weather station in the frame. And well, <laughs> at 200 millimeters, wow, okay, it's, <laughs> it's not even close to be in there, not even at 70. At 70 millimeters, it's almost in completely, but not perfectly, wow. Um, okay, so I think I will change positions now and go all the way back until the entire weather station can fit in the frame here. Okay, let's do that now. So right around here is the distance where at 200 millimeters I can get it, yeah, entirely in frame. Uh, yeah, I might have to do a two-panel panorama uh, just for the foreground, but for the sky I should be good to go. And the alignment is 
I think the alignment is really nice. Uh, it might not be all, almost perfect, but yeah, I think almost perfect is good enough. And it's also better when I'm, yeah, when I'm here doing the foreground shot and then I can just, yeah, <laughs> do like five centimeters to the right and then I have to come it in place for the sky shot and then I can blend it with the weather station. So yeah, I think that's going to work. I will now start to set up the tracker here with the tripod and all that stuff. And then I have to wait, I would say about 30 more minutes before I can start framing up the comet. And then, yeah, I'm all good to go. And in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I will also try to find some compositions for a Milky Way image. But I think the comet image is uh, the priority now. So yeah, let's build up the track up. The good thing is tonight that even on the top here of the mountain, there's almost zero wind. There's a slight, a teeny tiny breeze, but no st strong wind gusts or like on and off stronger winds. So looking really nice. For this shot here, I'm going to use the old but uh, very good, well, it's not old, but the very good Star Adventurer from Skywatcher. It's my go-to tracker and I will also use it with the L bracket here and the counterweight so that, yeah, the big and heavy lens has an easier, easier time on the tracker. And yeah, also later on in the night, that's something I haven't mentioned. I will also continue the testing of the Move Should Move Nomad tracker and yeah i can say the first impression so far is really it's really nice there will be a full review once i'm done testing and when i have some more experience with it but so far it's really nice i have to say really really good so now i will make sure that the tripod is leveled yeah, that's pretty much perfect and then um, I'm already pretty close to Polaris so I will quickly do the polar alignment but first I have to look on the polar clock where I have to put the and we have to put Polaris in the reticle. Uh, is it? Is it you, Polaris? Is it you? No. And we are polar aligned. Perfect. The only thing that's left now is the remote shutter release for long exposures, but then I'm good to go. Nice. I think I just found my foreground for the Milky Way shot later. And yeah, I think I will frame it up something like this with the radio tower. Usually I don't like these towers, especially with the red LEDs or just like lights up there. Don't know if they are LEDs. Um, I think something like that. Here we have some benches in the foreground. Maybe, maybe I will do something with the uh, weather station. I don't know yet. As you can see in the center of the frame, we start to see the Milky Way now. It's going almost vertically here. And it will move a little bit further to the right here later on. So I could use maybe something like that, where I have the uh, other station here on the right with this fence thing here as a leading line going to the Milky Way here. Well. Let me show you here, going to the Milky Way later. And then we have yeah, this whole composition here. I will shoot it with a 28 millimeter lens. 
and I think I will go to going to do a HARGB image. So really nice stuff. Come on, give me a random fireball. Come on, please. Give me the luck of a century, please. It should be dark enough now to at least start looking for the comet. So I will open up Stellarium again and I will ser search a few reference stars that I can use for yeah, finding the comet. And I think I found the alignment stars that I need. So I th yeah, I think I found them now. So let's see if I can point the camera there. Also, I will wait for the foreground exposures until it's fully dark because I don't like this, yeah, this blue hour or not dark enough foreground blending stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If, it, if you just don't do it right, you always notice it. At least I notice it. So, yeah. First, is it, is it balanced? Almost. So let's play. Counterweight. Yeah, the camera's balanced now. And yeah, let's see if we can find the comet. I have the comet now framed up the way I want to have it framed up, I think. It's not centered because in the center I will have the uh, weather station. So I have it framed up a little bit more to the left. And yeah, I think it looks tiny. <laughs> I mean, in the back here of the camera, it looks tiny. I can just see the nucleus, so the brightest part of the comet. And I really hope that I can get a lot more details um, when I stack multiple images. Yeah, so I think I will just start taking some more test exposures. And then when I think it's dark enough, let's see what time we have now. Oh, it's almost 11. So I think I might just start taking exposures because, yeah, every exposure counts. I will do a test exposure now at 30 seconds, f3.5. Let me turn off the light here. So the test exposure is running now, 30 seconds, f3.5. Yeah, behind me you can see the beautiful Milky Way core shining nice and bright up here. Uh, this location here, just for some behind the scenes details, it's a Bortle 4 location. And uh, I think I'm actually at the highest point now on this mountain here at 1,500 meters. So pretty far up or pretty high up. And that way I get less atmosphere and yeah, less bad stuff that's in the way. Okay. Let me see. I definitely have to adjust focus and it's not dark enough yet, but I will still just take exposures now. Yeah, I will find you in the focus again, then I will program my intervalometer to take exposures. And it's crazy how many satellites there are. It's almost like, yeah, bad. You know the deal, satellites are bad. I mean, for overall, for the overall use case for satellites is good, but for us, the photography in that niche hobby, it's the most, uh, yeah, distracting and ugly thing. Focus looks a lot better now. I would say it's really good. I think I might stop the lens down to f4 to get a little bit more details or sharpness. Oh no, you know what, forget it. I will just leave it there. It almost feels weird to have the comet off center. Yeah, you know what, I will just start taking exposures now. I won't do long exposures because uh, 30 seconds is more than enough. I'm really close to the horizon with a little bit of light pollution. Well, not a little bit, there's uh, plenty of light pollution there. But yeah, that's what I'm working with. So that's the deal. 
interval is four seconds. I will do unlimited, uh, unlimited images. Okay, so I'm shooting at 30 seconds now, at 3.5, and ISO 3200. I think that will work nice. Um, yeah, so let's start the image sequence. So while the A7 III over there is taking exposures, I will start to set up the Nomad tracker so that I can just hot swap the camera here to this spot and then I will take the exposures for the sky and when that's done I will take all the foreground exposures. And I see I might have to move, I think I might have to move a little bit more over there because I have a sign there that could be in the way. Yeah, I will move the, I will, I will set up the tripod here or the, the tracker so that you can see everything. But then in the end, I will move the tripod a little bit behind me. Okay. What you're seeing in the center of the screen now is a freshly deployed set of Starlink satellites. And I think they're, they're even... Oh no, these are stars. <laughs> yeah, that's one long streak there. I wish I had a longer lens, but yeah, you can see it right in the center. Really nice. Well, that's not nice. Ah, oh, guys, look at all this light pollution. That's going to be a quite challenging image, honestly. But yeah, that's uh, what I'm, what I have to deal with. Look at all this light pollution, guys. It's so, so painful. And of course, the comet has to be right in the center of this light dome. Yeah, quite unlucky. But yeah, there's actually nothing that I can do about it because um, yeah, even when I would travel like 50 kilometers away from that, it would still be way too bright. Oh, there was a little shooting star, I think. Um, it's, it would be way too bright to have an effect. So what I'm doing here, getting high up in the, uh, on, in the mountains at 1,500 meters and capturing as much images as possible is the only thing I can do to combat that light pollution. Yeah, just for a comparison, when we turn around towards the east, you can see how much better that is. It's really good, actually. When we look at the zenith with the Milky Way here, it's really, really good, as you would expect from a good border 4. And the south here with the Milky Way core, yeah, could be better, but it's not too bad. Especially today, it's really bad with all this haze you can see. Um, yeah, but well that's... That's pretty common here in Germany with the summer months, the good old haze. Yeah. Anyway, I will continue shooting here with the uh, telephoto lens on the comet. And then I will give an update when I'm on the next thing. <laughs> so that's the last exposure. Let me see how it looks. Uh, it looks nice. I mean, the detail is there. I can see the nucleus. And I think when I stack all the images together and give it a good stretch, then I might be able to get some details out of it. Let me see how many images I have. Yeah, the last exposure is running now. And then we can do flats. 
can start to prepare everything. And yeah, if you're not doing flats, I can highly recommend it. Especially when you're doing long focal length stuff where you have to yeah stretch out a lot of details like i have to do here so i would say it's almost necessary okay the exposures are done uh, and yeah it's time for flats <laughs> did not expect to be flash banged Okay, that's the dimmest setting. Okay. Let me hold this in front of here, turn off the red light, and then I will do ISO 100 in one fifteenth of a second. Uh, maybe, maybe one tenth. Let's see. Let's see how the histogram looks. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I'll take, let's say, 20 of them, so one, should be 20, something like that. Well, a little more than 20, so I don't care. Okay, let's turn off that here, and now I have to be quick, because I have to change the lens and everything now, so yeah, I will do that. Okay. Let's quickly double check polar alignment. Perfect. It's way off now. Way off. One thing I really can't recommend is to use a normal ball head as a method for pole alignment. It's painful. But I'm too lazy to get a replacement for that but I think I will do that very soon. Okay, finally, we are good to go. Let me turn off the light and start imaging. As I said, I really, really hate these radio towers with these uh, lights on the top. I mean, they have to be there, but they're so annoying. Uh, I had to move the tripod here like, I don't know, 50 meters more away from it because I had a little bit of stray light coming in from the sides and I don't have my landscape with me, I forgot it, in the car actually. Uh, so yeah, I still have it a little bit, but I think I will just crop this uh, uh, away or will, I don't know, correct it in post-processing because it's, it's, it's not big, it's just a little thing. Yeah, I'm currently shooting panel one for... <laughs> I'm currently shooting panel one. I'm doing a panel. I'm currently shooting panel one from the Milky Way panorama. And I don't know how many panels I will do. I will just do it, I don't know, more or less freestyle. And yeah, let's see. I will do 10 times 30 seconds because we have lots of air traffic, lots of satellites and lots of uh, planes coming from all different directions and yeah when I just have more images to stack I will get rid of them so yeah 30 seconds is the way to go for tonight and yeah everything is going good so far Okay, flats are done. Now 
I can do all the foreground shots for both compositions. Nice. Alrighty, I just came back from the spot over there from the weather station where I shot the foreground for the Milky Way shot. And I think it turned out really nice. The only thing uh, that's a little bit annoying is the al almighty red light from the radio tower up there. Super annoying. It illuminates the entire landscape here. Although it's very dim, so it's very fixable in post, I, I assume. So yeah, it shouldn't be that big of, of a problem. Okay, um, yeah, I think I would just start picking up now, going home, and then I will show you the images now at the end of the video. And yeah, I don't know if I will talk a little bit about the images, but uh, yeah, if not, I wish you clear skies. And let's hope that for the purse dates in two weeks, we have clear skies here. And also I wish that you have clear skies. So, okay, let's go home. So here you can see the shot with the comet and I think it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it's not the best shot in the world, but at least I could bring out some details from the tail despite all the light pollution. And yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with that shot. And here you can see the Milky Way panorama. I think this one just like the other turned out really nice. It's not my favorite image in the world and I think the conditions were not the best. I mean, we had clear skies, but as you can see, we had a lot of haze in the sky, so all the light pollution got even more like visible. But yeah, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. For these two images, I've uploaded post-processing tutorials for my Patreon, so if you want, you can check that out. And yeah, have clear skies and I will see you in the next video.